Hello and welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video Today. I'm your host, Steve Vonerhaar. Joining us today is Amuse Me CTO, Mark Simonkowski. Welcome, Mark. Hello. Thank you very much, Steve. It's great to have you there. Tell us a little bit about Amuse Me. You folks are doing some really uh, crazy, wild things in, in the realm that you call interactive video. Tell us about that. Yep. We want to change the way uh, people use video. Um, actually, bring you from the passive side of things directly into the video, um, interact with the video. And, and when I say with the video, I mean click directly on objects inside the video. That's something that people are not used to right now. Absolutely. This is a dream that we've had in the video space for, man, probably three decades. It goes all the way back to the late 90s and uh, uh, the Friends TV show, everybody uh, Dreamed of the day you could click on uh, Jennifer Aniston's sweater and just be able to buy it at a, at a click of a button. Uh, that dream never came true, at least during the early days of the video uh, video innovations on the web. Why is now the right time for interactive video to make a splash? Well, those, those AI models have become a lot more powerful. And the GPUs that we're using today, that in every day's machines, phones, everywhere, are so much faster than they were just back then. So the possibilities that we have now are completely different from what they were. That's the main difference. So you have the computing processing power now. What is the experience like uh, for those who are producing video and watching it? Walk us through the technical details of how interactive video as Muse Me envisions it actually works. Uh, uh, do we need special codecs or media players in order to leverage your capabilities? No, not at all. There is. Um, there is a player extension that we provide. Um, basically, what we're doing is we are creating an invisible overlay uh, over the existing video. So our back end processes the video that you have, for example, hosted on YouTube. Uh, it doesn't touch the video file at all. Uh, it creates a metadata and puts it on our server. And when you play back the video, then our player extension um, catches their interactions from uh, the users. And it knows exactly which objects in the videos uh, the user wants to interact with because it has that information available. So let's talk about some of the use cases for interactive video. Do you envision this is something that uh, we'd be using uh, on phones and tablets? Uh, you know, we've had Apple, for instance, looking at uh, really integrating AI significantly into the iPhone with their announcement earlier this month. Uh, or are you intending uh, this for use on television programming or maybe OTT uh, content? Yeah, we can use this on smartphones, on tablets and PCs right now, uh, but it's totally possible to extend it and bring it onto smart TVs, for example, with the extensions that we have. It just requires a, a little bit of a deeper integration at that point. So what do you envision as some of the prime use cases for interactive video? We've had this dream of it being in e-commerce and advertising uh, for quite a while, but how do you see interactive video being put to use? Totally. I mean, e-commerce, uh, advertising, that's that's the first one that's obvious. I, I dream of a world where I don't watch a video that's interrupted by advertisement, but the adverts are actually within the video. Right? I don't even need to know because if I don't care for the product, I ignore it. But if I'm curious, I click the product and I get the information that I need. And so. So there are a lot of different activities in terms of, uh, I guess, training as well, huh? There's, uh, uh, could we see applications in, in areas beyond advertising and e-commerce? Well, absolutely. Uh, if, if you think about sports, for example, right, whether it's sports or esports, actually both are viable, um, where you, you want interaction from your, from your audience, from the fans. Uh, right now, what people do is voting, for example, um, and here now you, you can have all kinds of objects in the actual live stream and people can click on them to vote you don't you don't need the sidebar that you are used to where you, you you need to find it first and then you identify like go directly in the video and click on the object that you're interested in for for your voting or actually control something that's the next thing right if if you think about interactive gaming of the next generation is where you you actually as a user the majority of users controls the the gameplay. If 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 most of the users um, click on a certain object in in the video, then 
the content producer, the, the game player, uh, sees like, oh, everybody wants me to do this and that and go to that door, open it up and see what's behind. That That is a lot more involved than, it, than it's right now. So really the secret sauce here is uh, interactive video really means that we identify specific objects within the video and uh, be able to trigger actions based on interacting with those objects. Is that a correct description or how do you see objects playing, uh, playing a role in, in making interactive video really uh, relevant uh, in future applications? Yeah, that's, that's the key. Um, with AI being so powerful today, uh, we can detect what kind of object is in the video. Um, and then there is metadata being attached to that object. That metadata could be an action that, for example, in a live interactive environment, uh, you allow the users to, to choose. Or it could be metadata attached to a product, for example, that is placed in a video so that then an action is executed on the server side which could be showing you the, the detailed information about the product, um, re recommending um, a page where to go to, um, or just doing something in the back end where the clicks uh, of, the, of the viewers um, give basically statistical information about how many people are interested in, in which product that we are having included in this video. The options are, are super flexible. Yeah, it, it really uh, makes video uh, uh, super, uh, 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 super segmentable in terms of uh, how we can use it for AI oriented applications, literally linking specific pieces of data to specific objects within the video. And uh, you can just go from there in terms of uh, trying to dream up future applications for this technology. Yeah, right. Uh, if, if, you, if you think forward into the future, um, if you imagine VR environments, where you, where you go uh, through a scene, and that scene is, it could be a mixed reality scene, right, where you have interactive components placed artificially, but there's also all these objects in the room that are already there available, and they are real, in real time detected, and metadata is attached to them, so they can become actionable instead of just passive sitting around. I think that enables opportunities that are, that are mind blowing. And, and then you could in real time replace those objects, right? With, with different objects. It could be, it could be there's just a glass sitting on the table, but suddenly that it's, this glass becomes a dog, right? And it, this is, this en enables opportunities that probably most of the ideas we don't even have yet. They would, they would come from the community over time because as soon as you release a new technology, people grab and run with it, and they come up with the craziest ideas. It really is a blank slate uh, for for organizations to create against. Uh, but uh, help us out, if you will. Paint a picture of what interactive video might look like, say, five years down the road. I know that's so far down the line in terms of, uh, uh, you know, I might as well be asking you what's going to be happening in the year 2100 just about. But uh, let's just look five years down the line. Uh, when we look at interactive video, will these objects within the, in the video be able to be used in other ways than just presenting content? We'll be able to maybe even use these videos to navigate a website or uh, break down videos into separate component uh, opportunity, and, and you have separate objects. So what are the opportunities over the long haul? Yeah, for sure. I see, I see websites completely changing. Um, Right now, you can already see that a lot of uh, websites use uh, full screen video because it gives you a, um, a good impression of, of, of the, uh, for example, a company presentation, a walk through through the company, uh, the people who work there, the products that are designed. And if, if this video website suddenly becomes completely interactive and you don't need to leave the video to get more information, but you just click in the video for the information about the product, about the owner, about the environment. I think that, that that's complete game changer. Um, another thing that, that in the future will be super powerful is that all this information gives us more knowledge about the objects that are possibly um, available in the digital realm 
when we have detected them and attached metadata to them. So those systems will learn over time and improve over time and become more powerful over time. It really is a blank slate of, of opportunity here. Uh, uh, it's one of these technologies. Very rarely do we run into to, uh, uh, technology platforms that really uh, make us think about uh, video in, in a truly different way, but this really uh, gets me thinking about uh, different ways that video can be put to work in 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 ways beyond uh, just a typical content uh, approach to to, to uh, communicating information and concepts and ideas, but really letting the video uh, emerge as the data type in it uh, in and of itself, and that's uh, uh, really opens the door. Uh, for many different applications in the intelligent video universe. Uh, Mark Simonkowski uh, from MuseMe, a CTO over there. Thanks so much for taking the time and visiting today. My pleasure. Thank you very much. And we thank you for taking the time to watch today's episode. If you want access to more episodes of Intelligent Video Today, just go to the link right below there. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get access to more thought leaders like Mark Simonkowski. For Intelligent Research and Intelligent Video Today, I'm Steve Vonderhaar. Thanks for your time.